Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at friction hitches, which are commonly used in climbing primarily for glacier travel, uh, which are used for self-rescue from a crevasse, as well as sometimes belay systems on the glacier, and also for backups for repels. And we're going to start with the simplest and then move to the more difficult to construct, and that also will happen to line up with the least holding power to the greatest holding power of all the hitches. So the first hitch I'm going to talk about is called the auto block, also called the French Prusik. And to create this hitch, I'm starting out by using a piece of four and a half foot long sterling cord. It's made out of nylon. And this is five millimeter in diameter. And this is an ideal length and type of cord and diameter of cord to use as a backup for a rappel. As a little trick, so uh, first of all, to make this Prusik loop, you'll see that's a double fisherman's knot, and you can take a look at our other knots in this series for how to tie that. And I'm also creating a clove hitch right next to this knot. Anytime you're using a piece of material that's in a loop, that material was joined somehow, and it typically was joined with a knot or a sew bar if you're looking at something like a piece of webbing. So we're gonna to need to make sure that our knots and our sew bars stay out of the way while we're making these hitches. And one easy way to do that is simply to create a clove hitch right up close to that knot. And now that's gonna stay close to the carabiner. So to build this hitch, it's quite easy. I'm gonna place that knot almost on the rope, just off the rope, and I'm going to wrap. And when I wrap, I just wanna make sure I'm wrapping neatly so there's no crosses. And I keep wrapping until almost all this cord is used up, just enough cord to meet back on itself. And then I clip my carabiner back in, and I like it to go to the narrow side of the carabiner because you'll see that pinches this hitch to itself a little bit better. And now when I pull to the right or to the left, there will be a little bit of movement and then the hitch will bind. However, even if I'm pulling on this, if I put my hand on here and I push hard enough, I can get this hitch to slide. So that's called moving under load. And that's one of the advantages of this friction hitch when you're using it to back up your rappel is you may want to have this hitch disengaged so you can continue rappelling after using it as an assisted brake uh, below your device. So this is a primary hitch that's used for backing up rappel. The next hitch we're gonna use bites much more strongly. It's a little bit more difficult to construct, but I'm gonna do it the same way. So I have exactly the same diameter, the same length of cord, same type of cord, and I've still isolated the knot by using a clove hitch. You don't need to do this, but it makes it a little easier. And now there's a particular technique that makes tying the clove hitch a lot easier. So the first thing that is a common mistake is getting this knot bound up on the rope. So the nice thing about this technique is, oh, especially if it's preset like this, it's very difficult to make that mistake. The first pass, I want to pass this carabiner and the, the knot all the way through and pull a little bit. So I have a bit of a smiley face, but it's mostly pulled through. And now from here, I'm going to pass a bite through, okay? So instead of pushing the end through, I push a bite through, like so, and then let the tail follow behind. That prevents it from getting as twisted, okay? And it allows me to dress as I go. Now I pull these apart, and I wrap again, and I push a bite through one more time. Okay. And now I push this together and I have a well-dressed Prusik hitch, okay? To know that it's well-dressed, which means that the knot is uniform and there's no crosses, you can see that there should be a big smiley face that starts on the very outside of the hitch, that's this here, and then the tongue the middle of the hitch should be coming out of the very center and not off to any side. I shouldn't see any overlapping of strands here or here. In the event that there are crosses in the hitch, it won't bind up quite as well as it should on the rope, and you'll just need to find the cross and move that 
until the hitch is dressed. This hitch, just like the previous one, I can pull to the right or the left and it binds. And you'll see this doesn't move nearly as much when I pull. It's biting stronger and it bites faster. And when it's under load like this, it's much more difficult to release. If the load isn't too large, you may be able to release it. But typically, it's not very releasable under load. Okay, so this is a preferred hitch for rope ascension where you don't necessarily want this to start sliding down. Okay, the last hitch that I'm going to show, um, I'm going to take the carabiner off for this, is called a climb heist. And a climb heist will bite strong in one direction, but not as strong in the other. So to do this climb heist, I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, the analogy I'm going to use is a racing car. The racing car has a spoiler. So the first part of this hitch I'm going to construct is the spoiler. And the spoiler is the back of the car. So whichever direction I make the hitch relative to the spoiler is the direction the hitch is supposed to grab. So if I build the hitch to the right of the spoiler, car would travel this way, which means the hitch is meant to grab in this direction most strongly. It can also grab going backwards, but just like a racing car, racing car isn't so strong going in reverse. So I'm going to wrap this up. Okay. So I'm going to use up most of the material and then I pass this loop through the back loop, so through the spoiler, and the racing car is going this way, so this is the direction where it's going to bind up most strongly. If I reverse the direction, the, it binds up about the same as an auto block and can be released under load. So a very versatile hitch. This hitch is more common to do with longer pieces of material such as double-length runners and cordelettes. So here I'm going to make my racing car go the other direction, okay? So I'm going to build my car first and then put the spoiler on last. Okay? One key on this is ideally the spoiler, this little loop on the back of my hitch, you want shorter than the hitch itself. But the more wraps you add in this hitch, the more twists you can see you add to your rope. So I find for these hitches, I like the auto block to be four to five wraps. The prussic loop is three wraps. And the climb heist, I find four to six wraps is pretty good. Generally, the more five to six wraps you have, the better friction you get. But once you get beyond six, you start getting reduced friction because of the twisting. So now, this, and through and just pull the end all the way through. And to make sure this loop doesn't get any longer, I'll back the car up. So the car the spoiler, and you can see that loop in the back is getting tighter and tighter and tighter and now it's nice and small. So when I pull that car forward or engage the hitch, the loop at the very end, the spoiler, stays shorter than the hitch itself and it still continues to have great binding power. Really great hitch to know. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate that one more time with a double length runner. Double length runner, you have a sew bar, so you want to make sure to keep your sew bar out of the way. All right, so I'm going to start. You can start with the sew bar off of the rope, like this, the same way we did with the knot, or we can start at the very opposite end, okay, which is what I'm going to do here. And now I'm going to wrap. 
Okay. I'm feeding a little bit more in so I can get a couple more wraps in there. Okay, so that was about four wraps. And now I pass the tail through. Okay. Just like before, I'm gonna back this up. You can see the tail getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And now I reverse the direction and I get a nice binding hitch in the direction that I want the, the bite to be strongest.